Welcome back everyone, I'm K Plays Games, this is Eve Online, and welcome back to a ridiculously stupid self-sufficiency challenge in which we're not allowed to buy or sell anything to or from players. Last time out, we finally got our hands on an Algos and we did some level 1 missions. We did 16 level 1 missions, it took us about an hour and a half and then I spent another hour looting and salvaging because we didn't have a proper salvaging ship. This Algos, however, performed amazingly well. We barely ever had to turn on the armour repairer, it just flies around at 1400 metres a second and kites everything to death. It looks a little bit art deco, it looks a little bit streamlined modern, it looks a little bit like a 1930s science fiction Flash Gordon spaceship. It also looks a little bit like a submarine, this bit at the front with the rails and the gun looks like a, an old World War I submarine. But whatever it looks like, it's a really good ship. So I built two of them. Why did I build two of them? Because I wanted to make one of them into a salvager. And here it is. To build that into the salvager, I had to go all the way to a Mars base to pick up this small salvage tackle one blueprint. But that was fine because that let me find buyers for the Concord officer emblems which we found in one of the missions. And we had some NPC trade goods I managed to sell down there. That brought in a, a total of about 2,000 disc, but I was going there anyway, so why not? On the way back, I did more retail therapy to cheer myself up after having done a 90 jump round trip. So I started picking up all the blueprints for things we're going to need when we eventually get into a cruiser. Medium armour repairer 1, large cap battery 1, 10 mega newton afterburner 1, medium ancillary current router 1. I also spent 1 million isk. That's how much it costs to reprocess all the warp disruption fuel generators we've been stockpiling. And that just gave me enough mega site to build three small tractor beams. And here they are on the ship. These have a range of 20 kilometers and they pull cargo containers or wrecks towards you at 500 meters a second. So when we're looting and salvaging missions, we don't have to spend all of our time actually approaching the wrecks to get within the salvager range of 5,000 meters. We start the game with salvaging rank three and that makes salvager ones have a success chance of only 15% per cycle. Every time it cycles round and the cycles are 10 seconds, there's only a 15% chance of that module being successful and providing you some salvage. I have drastically improved that by fitting three small salvage tackle ones, each of which improve access difficulty bonus by 10%, so there's three of them. So indeed, 15 plus three times 10 is 45. So these three salvagers are each three times better than the ones we had. So we effectively have nine pre of the salvagers we had previously. That's one way of looking at it. We were using two salvagers on this little mollusk and now we have an effective nine. So yes, things are much better. With the micro warp drive off, it's kept stable so it can do all its salvaging. The micro warp drive is only there in case something is out of range of the tractor beams. And we even managed to have a spare low slot which has bumped up the cargo hull to 400 cubic meters. So we have a proper salvaging ship now, so that's great. What's the plans for today? Well, we did level one missions. We did 16 of them in this thing. It was absolutely wonderful. Then we did the resulting storyline mission. The storyline mission provided two things for us. If we go to interactions and standings, it provided us our first faction standing stick with Galanti Federation. We went from 0, 0.00 to 0 0.03. Ooh, wow. And that's because it was only a level 1 mission, it was only a courier mission, it wasn't a combat mission. A combat mission would have given us more, but we did get plus 0 0.035. So yeah, that was uh, nice, I guess. And the other thing it gave us, if you go to character, augmentations, it gave us this limited ocular filter, which is increasing our perception by one point, so that speeds up our training a tiny little amount. But hey, we got an implant for free, so um, can't complain about that. We're not going to be doing missions in this thing today. We're going to be hunting for the DED 3 out of 10 escalation in combat sites. So we're going to go to the the three constellations we've had great success in before. Eustron, Agisison and Ambrae. So that's what we're going to be doing today. If we don't find any DED sites, then we will go back and do more level 1 missions. I'm not sure whether I'm going to do this as a sped up time lapse or just a montage of important moments. But... Whatever happens, I hope you enjoy it. So let's undock and see what we find today. 
Skills wise, I've completed Galinty Destroyer level 3 and that has pushed the damage of the Destroyer up from 112 to 117 because the drone's got another 10% bonus. And we completed negotiation level 2 which increases the pay the agents are paying us by 10%. And that is per level, so we've done two levels of that, so that's um, going to give us 20% more money from the agents, which is nice. Yeah, hide away, let's have a look at this. I believe this is the first time we've actually taken this ship into an anomaly. No one else is here, that's good. It's the short range one because it's not the telescope. So we'll just spit out the little drones. Oh, I should have changed the drones back to kinetic ones, never mind. The other good thing about going to destroyer levels is that this ship also gets 10% bonus to small hybrid turret tracking speed per level, which makes the guns more accurate. I mean, everything is just melting big time. You will notice I am just standing still. We're not orbiting the bunker like we were in the frigate because uh, we don't have to. This thing's much more survivable and it does almost double the damage so it's A it's more survivable itself and B it's pushing out a lot more damage so it kills things faster so that's two ways it's almost like a fourfold economy. Able to take more damage and able to push out more damage. There we go hideaway number one done. No commander no escalation. Well I'll keep going and we'll see what we get. On the way to the next system, mid-warp, this Serpentis refuge has okay. cropped up, so okay. let's take this thing into its first refuge. As we know, we had to be quite careful in refuges before. In the frigate, we had to orbit really fast at like 20 kilometers and kite all the enemy destroyers. Let's see how our own destroyer deals with that. Good, no one else is here yet. There are 27 other players in local though, so that's a little bit annoying. Uh, we're up close, so yeah, let's go for it. Well, here comes someone in a battlecruiser. Is he going to be courteous or is he not? Curtius. Okay, let's get this ship moving. We're actually taking some fire. Um, I'm not sure I want my orbit path to be that bad. I want it to be somewhere like 12,000. Most of the damage we're taking is coming from the turrets. It's a good thing that our tracking speed has been improved because we're moving really quickly and that negatively affects our tracking. Right, let's just get rid of this missile battery because I think it's the missile towers that are really hurting me at the moment. Right, drones, get the other tower, please. So, you know, we can run our armor repairer for like a minute before we run out of cap, so I'm just going to leave it on just now, and then we'll just turn it off. As soon as the armor goes up to full, we'll turn it off. We'll turn it back on if and when we get down to half armor. Maybe we should make our orbit path 11. Just trying to find the speed at which, the distance at which our guns are still within range of the things we want to shoot. But it still lets us orbit nice and tight. Maybe 10. Just want to come in a little bit closer. Shields are going back up. I'll just give us one more little burst of our Corelli A-type small armor repairer. 
which does 120 hit points every five seconds. Every six seconds, I should say. Oop, right. Oh, well. Just one destroyer. A one-on-one -on -one destroyer beatdown. And this guy seems to be either shooting at the drones or he's blaster fit and he can't catch us because we're extremely fast. Either way, he's melted. Right, two more destroyers. And this guy is railgun fit and he is hitting us even though we're going really fast because we're a much larger target. But he didn't last very long, did he? And this guy's also railgun fit and he is hitting us again because we're a much larger target than we were when we were a frigate. But then we're pushing out twice the damage and they're gone. So yeah, refuge is not a huge problem. Still a little bit of a problem, but not a huge problem. That's good to know. Well, that's nice. We've done two hideaways, one refuge, and um, here we go. Escalation site. There are lots of people in here, like the Bixon Aviation and Arthras, the guy in the battlecruiser, everyone's farming these sites, but we're managing to find some very courteous people. Most of them have just warped out when they see someone else is running the site. Which is not common. It just seems to be a nice area of space. Now, another reason we were taking fire from the destroyers in that refuge is because we had a microwatt drive active and when they're active it balloons your signature radius by 500 percent what does that mean if we simulate the ship the signature radius is how large a ship appears to be for purposes of um, being hit and taking damage from missiles so at the moment we're 72 meters long but if we simulate the ship and turn on the microwatt drive we now balloon all the way up to 432 metres. So even though we were moving around 12 to 1300 metres a second, their railguns were still able to track us because to them, they were firing at a target that was 432 metres large. That's why we were taking more damage. But we have an escalation. Let's see where it is. It's in Cairngorton. And um, that appears to be high sec. Check the route. It's only four jumps away. Well, all right. That's five million in the bag. Drive what a active. wonderful start to the day. Even if we do not find any more sites, um, I'll be happy because we've got five million. So, yay.
Right, that is the end of the tour of the three constellations which we have chosen. We learned a few things. We learned that we're not quite high skilled enough yet to orbit refuge pads at like 10 and bring our guns into play. Yes, it's adding another 43.9 damage per second onto our targets, but we just take so much more damage. We came relatively close to losing the ship. Then we lost all the armor, we ran out of capacitor, I was unable to repair the armor, and we just managed to out DPS the ships before we lost this entire ship. Which would have been bad. I mean, I know we can build and replace most things, but um, if this Corelli A-type small armor repairer gets lost in the wreck, then um, that's bad. That's very bad. We'd go from 120 hit points every six seconds back down to 79, and that would be no good at all. So we learned that when we're doing refuges, we need to orbit at 25. I did this one at 25, and as you can see, uh, I never turned on the armor repairer, and our shield was actually going up from the previous one. So at the end of this refuge, I ended up with more hit points than I did when we started, so um, that was nice. We did not get any commanders, we did not get any more escalations. But let's head out to this escalation and see how good this Algos does it and how much faster it is than the Mollus was. Of course, I will be hitting every site I see along the way. We might get another one, you never know. Fingers crossed, and away we go. Alright, we are in the system where the DED site is, so let's see how quickly this ship can do this narc warehouse. The time is 12.41, so let's go. We're going to bounce off this hitbox. Yep. One other thing we tried was using our medium drones. They're slower and they have worse tracking and um, they miss quite a few of their shots because they've got quite low skills and we haven't got any modules that boost their accuracy. And of course, when they miss, they're not actually applying the extra damage they do over and above tech um, the light drones. So that is a bit of a false economy. Let's just wake these guys up with a little bit of railgun action. Come on, aggress me, please. I did shoot at you. Right, fine. Oh, there they go. Two shots it took to wake these guys up. So for most of this site, we're just going to rely on the hobgoblins. When we're destroying structures, that's when we'll spit out the medium drones. I'm not even going to turn the micro warp drive on. Not for this initial lot, at least. If anything comes within range of the guns, then by all means, I will shoot the guns. This guy's a little bit close, so we'll just give him a little tap. There he goes. Looks like the guys at the back have aggressed my drones. I am going to bookmark one wreck in each room. We'll come back in the Mega Salvager Algos because um, 108 frigates is going to produce an awful lot of salvage. And of course the two cruisers and um, everything else that's here as well. Right, let's wake these guys up. Come on, give me full room aggression. I can handle it. Well, we hit him so he'll wake up eventually. Come on. There we go. Now they're all aggressed, we'll just boop, put the drones out. I'm just going to fly straight up. This guy's a little too close, so we'll just blip him with the guns. I was trying to figure out how we can go faster but not have a micro warp drive. Um, the answer to that would be a 10 mega newton cruiser sized afterburner, which would put us up to about 1200 meters a second. But the turning circle is terrible, so we would have to orbit at like 20 kilometers. And of course it needs an absolute ton of power grid. I would have to replace both of the drone control range rigs with power rigs and the drone damage amplifier with a micro auxiliary power core just to make the 10 mega newton afterburner fit either that or um take off the guns and maybe down gun to 75 mil then that's just giving up too much damage and too much range control just for the convenience of not having a larger sig radius it's just not worth it 
That'd be a terrible um, deal. Well, so far, Room 1's treating as well. Bring the drones back. Then we'll put out the mediums and they can go and munch on this supply traffic manager. We can do three mediums, which is 30 megabit, and one light, which is 35. Probably see a few misses from the hammerheads. They were even missing the stationary gun turrets and refuges, and um, that's not a good sign. Hey, they all seem to be hitting this thing because it's pretty large. That's good. I should really fire my guns, help them out. I have at home built 12,000 more thorium charge S. Because this thing does have five guns, and um, that's a lot of ammunition to be expending. I believe we started the day with something like 9,000, we're down to 5,800. As usual, we'll go to the left-hand room, and then room 4, then room 5, and then kill everything in room 5 other than the station, come back here, and do room 3. Let's see what's in this box. Hey, a Shadow Serpentus. Explosive coating. Well, alright. I like that. Because as we know, the explosive element of our armour is the weakest thing. And I did say, if we were going up against angels, we may take off the drone damage amplifier, which drops our damage down by 15%, but it would let us fit an explosive armour hardener. And I didn't have to um, buy the blueprint for that, because we just found this. 27% more explosive resist. Nice. Warp drive active. Right, faction for the win. It is now 12.49, so that took 8 minutes for that room. These guys are right up in my face, so they're going to get some rail guns in the noggin. Boom. I was trying to aggress the whole room, but nothing seems interested. They're not bothered about me killing their three friends here. That's fine. That'll wake them up. As soon as we see the first little target reticule, we'll stop firing the guns. There we go. Spin out the drones, get them to work. Go drones, go. So it seems that in this room, the front three are one big group, this middle lot are one big group, then the back three are a little group in their own. I believe this fit is stable if I have the micro warp drive off and not firing the guns, then it can just face tank with the armor rep. It's definitely an emergency situation that I do not want to have to do that. Well, let's just approach the staff quarters. I think we've got enough hit points in the shield and armor that we can just fly straight through these guys. One little squirt of micro warp. I'm not even gonna bother looking in the charge ammunition storage and serpentus containers because they never have anything good. They never have. I've never found anything good in any of these. And I don't just mean in this playthrough, I mean in 16 years of playing the game. Hey, look at that, another faction module. An EM energized membrane. I'll take that. Don't really need that key, but I'll take it anyway. Right, the time is 12.53. That was four minutes for that room. I like that. I like that a lot. So far, we're on 12 minutes for the whole site. It took us an hour to do the complete site in the Mollus. Orb drive active. Both times we did it.
Okay, on to the slightly nasty room now. Let's wake these guys up. Anyone else coming out to play? Come on, you guys at the front, wake up. Let me aggress you. Right, that's good enough. I am just going to fly straight up just so we're moving at least a little bit. Just because the cruiser may hit us because we are much larger than a frigate. Again, I'll just shoot anything that comes too close with the guns. And the drones are just kind of flying around destroying all different things because focus fire has never worked at all. Never worked properly in all the years I've been playing EVE. These guys are shooting at my drones because they're not shooting at me. Okay, now we've got too close to the gun turrets, so I'm just going to kind of click away from them. Yeah, it's the gun turrets that's hitting me now. Right, micro warp drive time, let's go. Pull some range on things. Yeah, one of my drones is getting knackered, and the drones have decided to go and split the fire again because focus fire has never worked correctly. Bring them in, spit them back out, put them back on what they were doing. Mate, right, guys, can we get this headmaster, please? Because he's beginning to annoy me. I'm just going to orbit the headmaster. At eight, which is where I've put my optimal range for. Where I've put my orbit to match our optimal range. Turned the armor repair off quite some time ago. Whoops, over repping, wasting capacitor. Right, drones, go and kill that safeguard. I'm gonna have a look inside the commander's wreck. Right, drones, go and get the guns. Hey, nice. Medium size railguns, dual 150s. That's what I want to put on my Vexor, so I'm taking all of those. Thank you for the medium size stuff, my friend. That will come in very handy. Put your armors back to normal so we can turn the rep off. Drones are small enough and fast enough to evade the gunfire from the turrets. That's good. I should probably wake up the guys at the back. Here they come. Yep, good, 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 good. I haven't bookmarked a wreck here yet, whoops. Just go upwards because everything is rapidly closing in on our position. particularly even wanting to pull away from them. I just want them to approach me slightly slower so I can pick them off with the guns. Like so. There's some double click somewhere in the general vicinity of the gate. Oh no, look at that. Our focus fire drones have not focused fire again. What a great surprise. Right, drones, I'll take care of this last watchman. You get the guns. Go, go, go. Got him. Let's just approach the acceleration gate. So we'll approach the gun. I'm just going to help the drones out. Why not? Looks like they don't need my help. That's going to be dead by the time I get there. Hurrah! Sweet. And the time is 13.02. So that was nine minutes for this room. 
warp drive active. Yeah, I'll just shoot some guns at the closest target just to attract some aggression. That should be enough. Are they going to aggress? Yes, they are. Jolly good. They're within range of the drones, so out they go and away they go. Almost a whole room aggresses. It's just this group at the bottom and that group in the back. Maybe this group on the left that's not going to aggress. That's okay. Everything's more than far enough away. I'm going to manually tell my drones which targets to attack just to make sure they're not splitting off and doing their own thing. I want to be in control of what's getting killed. Again, I'm just going to sit still and not move, maintain capacitor until something gets within about 15 and then I'll start moving and firing my guns. So I want the drones to attack things in order of distance, closest to furthest away. Should be mark the first wreck, I suppose. Ow, something just hit me. Probably the cruiser. to start moving. Just a little bit, just under normal steam power. We don't have to go crazy with the microwatt drive. We just click towards the station, see if we can't aggress the other groups now. Because why not? actually have to turn my armour repairer on. Imagine that. Right, this patroller is aggressing the drones, not me. Let's change that. Yeah, I'm getting hit a little bit too much, so let's make warp drive out. Just get out of range. It's probably good enough. Feel some range, make things miss us long enough for the armor rep to do its thing. And we're fine. Turn the guns off because they're not going to hit at that range. Turn the rep off because it's fine. Let the drones do their thing. I did my thing. I managed to aggress the other groups, so that's all I wanted to do. Get that guy, because he's mostly dead. Maybe we drifted into range of the gun towers. Maybe that's why I took a big whack. That's probably what happened. Go drones, go. Just gonna give ourselves one more squirt or micro water drive to get back down to where we wanna be. Which is aggressing this lot of fools which are at the, the bottom of the station. These sentry guns, um, they don't take them that, that much killing, do they? No, don't target the station yet, you fool. Yeah, right, the cruiser hits quite hard if I let it. So let's not let it. There we go, Mr. Drones. Now they can go and kill the cruiser. And I will aggress these guys. Okay, these guys have aggressed my drones. That lets me sneak up behind them. I'm going to shoot them in the back. <laughs> run, you fools, run. Ow. Okay, the other gun turret at the back is shooting at me. It's not great. Uh, 
One of my drones is nearly dead. Bring him back. Bring him back. Didn't spot that. Okay, we need to actually be a little bit careful here. We're being a little bit too blase. But everything has now aggressed me, so that's good, I think. Yep, low capacitor warning. Turn the armor rep off. Just need to run at speed to pull lots of range. Everything's aggressed me. That's good. That frees the drones up to do the killing. Cruiser's repairing himself. I took a big whack from him just then. Kind of have to turn the micro warp drive off. I know, capacitor's not happy. Right, let's turn the armor repairer off because now we're below 30% capacitor, it will drain much faster. We can turn the rep back on when we get to about 40% cap. That's probably the sustainable level now, so we can turn it back on. Yeah, Cruiser's repairing himself all right. It's slightly annoying. But he's about to get droned in the face. I'm going to bring the little drones back. And we're going to put out the mediums. Mediums versus Cruiser. There's a whole different kettle of fish. They should not miss this guy this time. And away they go. Right, some of them are missing as they're establishing their orbit. Once they get into orbit, they'll just smash them up. Just going to turn the sensor booster off to save a little bit more cap. There we go. Now the only thing drawing cap is the rep itself. Man, that cruiser was annoyingly tough. Right, let's just stop my ship. Because we're going to fly back. We'll probably just go to this Astro House and get free repairs on all the drones. Because we need to come back and go back in the site and do room three. Right, that's everything in the room dead. Uh, it's 13.15, so it's about 13 minutes to kill everything in the room. Apart from the station, of course, but that will be next. Warp drive active. Warp drive active. Okay, and we're back in the room. And it's time to head into room three, which is the final room of this five room complex, because that's how our logic works. Let's aggress these and these and the ones in the middle who will spawn imminently. Imminently. The group in the middle who will spawn imminently. There they are. Knew they had to be here somewhere. Let's just aggress all three front groups. Come on, I shot you. You should be aggressing right now. There we go. No, you're not going to aggress. You don't want to join the party? That's okay. Right, that's them and them. So we can at least send the drones out on them. Good, they've noticed as well. Jolly good. Here they come. This other group has also aggressed. Well, that's fine. I don't mind that. The more the merrier. I have plenty of ammunition for everyone. Oh, drones, kill this one. He's closer. Guns, kill this one. They're all getting a little too close, so we'll just head directly upwards. Oh, 
I'm just going to try and aggress the other groups. There's only a few frigates left here, just two. Right, that's a couple of rounds into him. And get a couple of rounds into you. Okay, now they've woken up, that's good. And the group at the back. And the cruiser as well, so I'm just going to double click straight up. One more frigate, gone. And let's do the cruiser next. We'll loot his wreck because that's where my last loot box is and I need the loot box. That's where all my money is coming from. And there he goes. It'll explode then. There you go. Boom. There's my box. No faction stuff in that box but we've had two in this site so can't complain getting faction loot from the other um, loot box providers in this site is relatively rare to get two in one site is pretty rare so it's now 13.25 there's 10 minutes since we cleared room 5 right Let's see how long it takes us to kill this thing. Three medium drones, one little drone, go. Go, go, go. I need to get myself into position as well. And there we have it. Another three out of ten done. First time we've done it in the Algos. Skill training completed. And it sounds like we've completed a skill at the same time. That's lovely. What skill did we complete? Is it light drone operation? It was light drone operation. All right, we've got another 5% damage on our drones. This is the cargo can. Let's see what we won. Just the overseer's box. Well, to me... Um, that doesn't really matter. I'm not too disappointed because that's 2.1 million that we can sell on the market to an NPC. All right, and the time is 13.34, which means it took us nine minutes to destroy the station. And that means the total run time was 53 minutes, I do believe, which is slightly faster than the Mollusk did it, but not terribly faster. Mostly because our guns never really came into play, so we're just going off our drone damage. Which for the most part is four hobgoblins. Which now are doing 55 DPS, which is about the same as the Mollus was doing with the drones and the guns. So that's why we're only slightly faster. We're slightly faster because when we are killing the station, we're doing 117 DPS instead of... 57, so we've almost we've doubled our DPS for killing the station and things like the cruisers and the gun turrets. So we are faster, not all that much faster. So let's go home and get this salvager out and we'll come back and we'll salvage all five rooms. Check I have five boot marks. Yes, I do. Excellent. And we'll see how much loot and salvage we get from this as well, because that is a lot of wrecks. 110 wrecks for me to salvage. Lovely jubbly. Right, we're back in the salvager. Let's just do a little video and see how good this thing is. I should maybe have put some drones in the drone bay. Right, let's have a look. Just drag a box. Everything's within 20k, so um, that means I don't have to move. Fire the, s the tractor beams. Everything's dragged into range, and then I salvage them. Turn off that tractor beam because it's close enough now. Get it to start dragging the next wreck in. This one's close enough. Oh, that was quick. That's been salvaged already. That's close enough. 
that one's close enough. Maybe I should get, um, maybe I should get a signal amplifier on this because that will give me more maximum lock target. But then I think my skills only allow me to have six anyway, so there's not much point in doing that, is there? But yeah, um, this seems to be going a lot quicker. It's certainly quicker than having to fly around to each wreck, isn't it? Much, much quicker. Lovely. Hey, there we go. That's what we want. Warp disruption fuel generator straight away. Outstanding. Right, well this seems to work as a proof of concept. I shall hoover up the remaining 110 wrecks and we'll see you when we're back home. Right, it's only a little while later and I've completely salvaged that entire 3 of 10. We got a bunch of drones, a whole load of salvage, um, random assorted loot, nothing spectacular other than two more warp destruction fuel generators, which is good because um, we built this ship out of minerals, so we needed more minerals and there they are. See, if we were allowed to sell stuff on the market, this is worth almost 20 million isk. Warp drive active. So that's on top of everything else we found. We've got some little bits of ammo as well, but nothing too great. So I think that'll do us for today. We have made another 5 million isk. We haven't sold the loot boxes yet, but they're worth 4.2. So we began the day on 700,000. We're now on 3.1 million with another 4 million in the bank at home. So yeah, good going. Algos are fine ships. I am just kind of debating internally whether or not to replace the micro warp drive on the combat Algos with an afterburner. The speed does drop to like 580 something meters a second, but the cap life with the guns and the afterburner and the rep all running is somewhere around six and a half minutes and that should be enough time to run a refuge because refuges are like the only time we've been in trouble and a little bit when we've bitten off more than we could chew inside the 3 of 10 by getting impatient. So I think we may look into doing that. So come back and see if I did do that in the next episode. Until then, I hope you're still enjoying this series and I hope you look after yourself. I'll see you later.